Okay, welcome back. I'm going to do another of my model videos here with this construction circuit kit from the FET software at the University of Colorado. Um, I'm going to look at parallel circuits this time. Um, I really want to reinforce that this is absolutely free to use for yourself. I've put a link in the description as well, and it's a great, it's a great tool to help you understand and help you build your own circuits when you're away from the science lab and you don't have access to the actual equipment. I do appreciate that the components don't look like the symbol, so it's good to have a play to try and understand the concepts. You've got the voltmeters and ammeters over here to help you do that. Now I've created a simple circuit here and because it's a complete circuit, there is a current flowing, these electrons moving through and the bulb is on. Last time out, I built a series circuit by adding another bulb in next to in the same loop as this one. And I said, remember, just like a Netflix series, you watch Netflix series, you watch the episodes one after the other, a series circuit has components like bulbs wired one after the other. I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm gonna build what we call a parallel circuit. So in a parallel circuit, I've got two parallel lines, two different branches that don't have to actually in real life be straight lines. Uh, I've got two branches here, two routes for the current to flow. Last time when I added a, a bulb in series, the brightness of the two bulbs decreased. This time I've added a bulb in parallel and there's been no change to the overall brightness. Uh, let's move this up a little bit. I'm gonna add a third bulb now just to prove that. And there you go, and watch as I add the other two back up. There's no change in the brightness. So that's an advantage of a parallel circuit. As I add more and more bulbs, the overall brightness of each of those bulbs doesn't decrease. Now these are all identical bulbs, so they'll all have the same brightness. Now let's think about current in a parallel circuit. I'm gonna take out some of my wires and replace them with ammeters. Remember an ammeter has to be connected in series in the loop. It's the speed camera of the circuit. You can see going through my cell, I've got a current of 2.7 amps there. Let's put an ammeter in this first branch here in bulb number one. And you'll see that the current is less through that branch. Let's do the same through bulb number two. Now I could put it the other side of the bulb. It doesn't matter which side, it's still in series, still next to that bulb. Let's put it there, add a wire to connect them up. And you can see it's 0.9 amps down that bulb. And let's do the third bulb as well. Add an ammeter in. And there we go. The current is 0.9 amps through these bulbs. So as you can see, my 2.7 amps of current through the cell is being divided up into the branches. So in a parallel circuit, unlike in a series circuit where the current was the same the whole way through the loop, in a parallel circuit, if you've got branches, the current divides up between the branches. And if you look here, you can see the little electrons actually moving through different routes. Rule with a junction here like this one, the current going into the junction must be the same as the current going out of the junction. So I've got 2.7 amps coming down here. 0.9 amps coming out to the right here down that first branch, which means the difference between the two must be what's going down further on. And look, 1.8 amps down that branch. So to reiterate, in a parallel circuit, the current is divided between the branches. If this bulb had a different resistance, then the current through that bulb will change. But if they were all the same resistance, then the current gets split equally down the branches. Let's have a look at the potential difference. Now, to remind you, the potential difference is the difference in energy between two points in a circuit. So I need to connect my voltmeter in parallel in two points measuring either side of the thing that I'm testing, the energy either side. So I've wired my voltmeter in parallel with this cell here, one either side to measure the difference in energy here on the way out of the cell to here, the way back into the cell. And I can see that the difference in energy, uh, that's nine volts, nine joules for every coulomb of charge. Let's measure across this first bulb then. That's still nine volts. 
9 volts again and 9 volts. So the potential difference as you add bulbs in parallel, the potential difference doesn't change. Let's think about this. Potential difference is a difference in energy. On the left hand side, as the electrons gain energy from the chemical store in the battery, they haven't then transferred that onto the bulb yet. On the right hand side, they have transferred some energy to the bulb. So there's more energy on this left hand side than there is on the right hand side. But it's the same difference in energy on any of these branches on the left compared to the other side of the circuit on the right. So the potential difference doesn't change for each branch. So in a parallel circuit, the potential difference stays the same down each of the branches. And it's this equal potential difference that means that the brightness isn't changing, isn't decreasing through each bulb. We're transferring the same amount of energy to each, and that's a massive advantage. Another advantage of using a parallel circuit is that I can individually switch the branches. Say I wanted to be able to control bulb number one here, I can do that. You'll see that I'm able to switch bulb one on and off without affecting bulbs two and three. So that's a big advantage. That's something we couldn't do with a series circuit. However, there is one disadvantage that I'd like you to know about for a parallel circuit. Suppose I added a fourth bulb here in parallel. What I want you to do is I want you to watch what happens to the current through the battery here as I do that. Did you see it? As I added a fourth bulb, the current through the cell increased from 2.7 to 3.6. So another 0.9 amps of current through the cell. Current is the rate of energy transfer, the rate of charge moving through the cell and the charges carry energy. So as I add more and more bulbs, the current drawn from the cell increases. I'm transferring more energy every single second. And if that's the case, then my cell is going to run out of energy sooner. It's going to have all the chemical energy transferred sooner. So the more bulbs I add in parallel, the more quickly my battery will go flat, as we say. So that is a disadvantage to consider. You're drawing more current every time you add another bulb in parallel. Right, that's all I've got to say about parallel circuits. Please use this wonderful software to your heart's content. There's all sorts of things to play with here. It will really help your understanding of circuits, which I appreciate is not the easiest topic, particularly when you're having to learn at home and without the equipment in school. So use the link in the description, have a play for yourself, and I shall see you in a future video. Goodbye.